Perfect. All right. It's unmuted. Test one, two. Everybody hear me? Perfect. All right. Welcome to day one of Boilers Boot Camp. This week is web exploitation, as you probably already knew and saw on the board. Uh, so today we will be going over the basics of websites uh, and how to break them. So show of hands, how many people have either made a website before or know HTML? That is a lot of people. That was more than I expected. Nice. So you guys all have a head start. And uh, but if you don't know either of the things, uh, don't feel left out. We are going over uh, the basics, so don't worry. All right. So let's go over a bit of what web exploitation is. Uh, web exploitation is the art of poking at a website, web app, web server, until it does something it is not supposed to do. It could be as simple as you withdrawing negative one dollar from your bank's website, and it gives your account a dollar instead. Uh, hopefully your bank's website doesn't do that nowadays, or you have bigger problems. Uh, web is an interesting category of exploits because it's, uh, it's always changing, there's always new techniques, uh, there's not like there. There's new hacks to learn about because there's new web frameworks and such coming out all the time, and web technology moves so fast. It's also partly because the web was built on some janky technologies back in the day, meaning that all the modern internet is basically built on sand. Uh, and it's also partly because sometimes people just really don't know what they're doing. Uh, but I mean, I'd like to give people more credit than that. Uh, some issues are easy to miss, which makes for fundamental issues that worm their way into web code bases. Uh, so web exploitation is made much easier by knowing what those common issues are and looking for them. It's much quicker and much more reliable to know what you're looking for than to randomly stumble across some critical bug. So before we get at more of what web exploitation is, let's cover what it isn't. Web exploitation is not, in general, hacking networks. We won't be scanning any machines. We won't be pivoting through any machines. We generally won't be using Nmap, if you've heard of that, if you're familiar with it. Uh, this also includes penetration testing. We're not doing any of that. Uh, while some challenges might involve bending web servers to do our bidding, the word web is in the title for a reason. You're first and foremost hopping through a website to get at things that you shouldn't be touching. All right. So let's get at more of what web exploitation is. There's a lot of different categories, types of vulnerabilities that are common, that are commonly associated with websites and web apps, and also are common in CTF challenges. There's things like SQLI, SQL injection. There's uh, cross-site scripting. There's cross-site and server-side request forgery. There's WAC PHP. There's WAC JavaScript. Remember the when I mentioned the web was built on janky technologies from long ago? Those are the ones. Um, and then there's many other things. Those aren't the only types of web exploitation, out, web exploits out there, but they're the most common. Plus, they're pretty broad. There's a lot of things that make up those, and they always, they always take on like a different form, depending on what website you're attacking. Uh, I want to mention that OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, is one of the number one resources when you're working on web exploitation. They have their top 10 that they publish where it's the, the top 10 issues that play websites nowadays. Uh, and there, there's still broad categories, like injection is one of them, but there's still great hopping off points uh, for things to look to get better at uh, and to look for in websites. Uh, another place worth mentioning is ExploitDB, the exploit database. Uh, if you need those like obscure WordPress vulnerabilities or whatnot, there's a lot of stuff on there. It's not used as often, but it's still nice to know. Uh, so now that we've had a bit of background, let's jump into the basics. HTML, CSS, and JS. Uh, if you haven't heard of these before, HTML stands for Hypertext, Hypertext Markup Language, uh, which is like the building blocks of websites. Uh, CSS and JS we'll cover later. Let's start with HTML. So this is a website I made uh, 
approximately 30 minutes ago. Um, and it is great. Don't you love it? This is my awesome website, uh, and let's take a look at it. We have some links, I have a little description here. We have a password. Ooh, let's try something in there. Uh, password? No, that's not it. And then we have uh, Go Boilers, because they're great. Um, so yeah, that's my website. Uh, but what really makes up this website? Let's right click and click View Page Source. What is this? A lot of code. Um, so this is the source of the website. How the web works is that you ask a server for a website and it gives you back a text file. That's it. So this is the code of my website. Here's the title, welcome to my awesome website. We've got the links in here. It's just a bunch of markup, which is where markup in HTML comes from. Uh, it's just like a hierarchy or an outline of what you want the website to look like. Uh, now there's things like CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Note the word style. We're take a look at this style tag right here. Anything in between here changes the look of the website. So we have like the background color or the color. And then there's JavaScript, which is the scripting language of the web, which is this script tag down here. So uh, if you want to learn more about the basics of web development, uh, it's a bit crucial for some challenges. So I recommend websites like MDN, which is uh, Mozilla's developer network, is probably one of the best resources out there to learn about web dev. Uh, and then also W3Schools, also very good, um, to learn about how HTML, CSS, JavaScript works. Uh, but today, we are going to have a brief overview of it. So, I have my website here, right? Uh, let's take a look at this password form here. Uh, now, I could go through this source right here, and I could find what I'm looking for, but that's boring. This is really hard to pick through. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this. Let's take a look at the header first. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to click inspect this time. And this brings up every web developer's favorite tool, the developer tools, or inspect element. This is super powerful, and you can see it right away. As soon as I get into here, you can see that I have a website on the right. I have all the source here on the side. I have, it's the exact same thing as the view source, but also when I hover over things, you can see them on the left side there uh, showing up. So let's take a look at this, pass this, take a look at the image first. Right click on the image, inspect, there it is. We have an image tag here, and there's the URL. So the dev tools are really powerful. Uh, because you can pinpoint things in the website, you can change things, which is also another fundamental part of web development, is that since you're only requesting uh, a text file from the server, you can change whatever you want in that text file and make it look however you want. So if I wanted to change this from Go Boilers, I could double click it and say, yeah, Boilers, which is infinitely better. Um, so, and I want if I want to change the image, I could change, I could double click this URL here, I could change it. So, everything on a website is rendered on your computer from a text file. Uh, which also means that some critical things are also done on your side or the client side. So let's take a look at this password here. I already tried password, that's not it. Let's take a look at it real quick. I'm going to right click. Inspect, take a look around, here's the input, if I go down a bit, here's the button, and it looks like this check button, when you click it, it runs a check password function. Now, in HTML, you can add events to things, which ties HTML and JavaScript together. So, JavaScript makes websites do stuff. Otherwise, the web 
the websites would just be like static. They wouldn't do a whole lot. JavaScript makes them more dynamic, make them do more stuff, uh, like check passwords. So let's go here, and we have this on click attribute here, which means that when this button is clicked, it's going to run the check password function. Now, where's the check password function? It's probably going to be in uh, a script tag, because that's where JavaScript runs, and that's where JavaScript brick. JavaScript lives. So here's a script tag right here, right below. Let's look in here. There's check password. So when that check button is clicked, check password is run. And it looks like we're getting the password, which is all right, let's let's have a, a little little crash course in JavaScript uh, and HTML. So HTML if you want to identify certain elements in the website uh, for you to modify or do stuff with, uh, normally, I mean, if you're just doing HTML, you just have div tags, you have p tags, you have h1 tags. They're all pretty much the same. It's hard to pick out one. So you can add these id tags. Uh, so this is the main div. This is embed. and where we enter the password here, you can see that it's highlighted over here, if I right click inspect. This is ID is the password. So if I, in JavaScript, call this function, Java, do, oh, sorry, document.getElementById, we're going to get the element in the HTML with the ID, the password. So now the password field represents, it's a variable that holds this element in it, and we can check things. So let's skip this message div right here, and we're going to go to this if statement. Uh, if password field dot value equals swordfish. So what we're doing here is we're taking that element that we have, we're checking the value inside it, which is a property of input elements, uh, and we're seeing if it's equal to swordfish. So that's kind of suspicious. Uh, let's try. Oh, we got it. Nice. So sometimes people who don't really understand websites will put uh, things that seem critical in the client side, and you can look at all that code in your browser. You can dissect it, you can see what it does. And then it's just a matter of picking apart what it does and making it do something that it's not supposed to do. Uh, of course, not only people who don't know what they're doing do it. Uh, there are also, every browser has to do stuff, right? So there's always going to be client-side elements that you can look at and see if you can break. And that's what, Java, that's what you're looking at in JavaScript. Uh, so. The other thing that we can do in the DevTools is we can go up to Sources, and we can take a look at all the files loaded by this website. So it looks like it's loading index, which is the HTML. It's also loading a style sheet, which is just more of CSS, which is what makes the website. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't matter what you use, like Node.js, Apache, PHP, that's all done on the server side. What gets sent to you is always going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you'll always be able to view all of it. And the way that you, if you want to, yeah, go for it. Right, like, that's good, but the thing is, for example, if you look at complicated paragraphs, so Vue.js uh, runs, it, it is a user user, it is a web app that runs completely client side, and it is just for some of the, uh, it, it's a web app that runs completely client side. So, because of that, yeah. there is a lot of code, a lot of JS that, that you have to basically break through. And it gets complicated to find the source of the function calls if you're trying to look at something. So, for example, an application that I was trying to exploit, I tried to change the source for it. Okay? And if you find a function call that was running the button, 
Uh, so that would fall under reverse engineering because what you're doing there is Node.js uh, can be on the client side, but it's not going to be, you won't be dealing with, unless you're dealing with Electron, which if you guys have heard of it, Electron is basically you have uh, a website and then you turn it into a local application. So that'll be using Node. Uh, but other than that, uh, Node has no, no place in this on the client side. Uh, if you do want to trace through like complicated JavaScript, uh, what I'd recommend is getting all the source, which it all has to be loaded into your web browser to begin with, and you can actually download it by just right-clicking, and then you can open it or save it. Uh, and then once you have all the source downloaded, you can use something like VS Code or another like language browsing thing, and then you can either control-click on it or use another tag browsing thing to browse through the code. But that's in that's like a different type of thing. So uh, we're going to be de dealing with more simple examples today. So these are all the files that are loaded. And we can download them. We can view them. Yeah. So if you are looking for some sort of hidden JavaScript function, you can go in here. You can browse through all the JavaScripts or CSS or HTML and check what you're looking for. <laughs> Uh, did you have a question? Or no? Okay. Um, right. So, let's do a demo. At this URL, um, there is a basic challenge uh, where you have to find three flags. It might be four, I'm not sure. Um, and you, you, there's no place you have to submit them. It's just for your own benefit. Uh, and you'll be digging through HTML, CSS, JavaScript to find these flags. Uh, yeah, so you guys will have about 10 minutes. And then we'll get back here. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to raise your hand. So you gotta include the H. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, you gotta type it in. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Also, I just want to point out real quick, uh, the flag will look something like this. So that's that's basically what you're looking for is B O C T F.
expand recursively lets you see the most things. Uh, and if you scroll right down, you can see the first flag right away. You're always going to want to look at the source first. Uh, always, the first thing that you should do, besides just getting a feel for the website, is to open up the dev tools. Uh, because sometimes it'll show you things that you would are completely hidden, hints, whatnot. Uh, so this is the first flag. The second thing, we're going to Scroll down and we see, can you guess what's under here? I don't know. Let's right click, inspect. There it is. Second flag. So this is colored over in black with CSS. Uh, but since we can't see what's under there, let's see if we can uncover it. So since everything is rendered on your computer, you can change the styles yourself. So this tag is styled with the color, this, the tag color black, which sets its color to black. So let's double click that, backspace it, and we can, at least we can see it now, kind of. I can see it. I don't know if you guys can. It's the div up there. Ah, it's the div. Okay. So we're going to change this style too. Backspace. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so that's flag number two. Flag number three, here we go, kind of harder. So we look here, there's a button here, 
but it's disabled. We can't click it. So let's just change disabled. In this case, we're actually going to have to bath face the whole thing. And we're also going to have to change the div style. Let's get rid of that. Oops. Yep. And then we can click it. There's that fly. So that's three. Here's the big one though, the login. Inspect that. Let's resize this a little bit so we can see what's going on. Oh, on. There we go, okay. So username and password. Let's scroll down, see if we can find a script tag. Maybe scroll up, there's a script. So this is authenticated using JavaScript. Uh, and in here, we can also check in the form itself, if we inspect this again, and we look through some of these tags. Here's that on click again, on click login. So the login function will run when you click this button. So let's go up. Here's a login function. So it's getting the username and the password elements and checking their values. We're just going to assume that that's these two, but you can also check with inspect element. There's the ID. Right. And it's checking to see if the username's value is admin and the password's value is that string of characters. So let's put that in. And hit submit. Some people actually do this. It's scary. Um, all right, so we've got the flag, but it's mixed up. What could have gone wrong? Let's look at this. I'm going to pick expand recursively so I can see everything. First thing that pops out to me, there's a script tag that's called unscramble. This definitely looks scrambled. So this probably unmixes it. Now, I could run all of this JavaScript somehow, maybe insert a script tag to do it, to call it, I don't know. Uh, but I want to introduce you to something known as the console that I probably should have introduced before. If we go to the console right here, this is also one of the best tools in the DevTools. And that's because you can run whatever JavaScript you want right here. So if I wanted to console.log, hello, there we go. The other thing it can do is reuse any code that's on the web page and access the web page. So we can just, bam, right there. So this falls under kind of work smart, not hard. If there's something that you have to unscramble or like some complicated path that you have to follow and you have to do a lot of steps, just reuse the code that's in the website already. It makes it much faster. Uh, all right, so let us move on to HTTP requests. So, how the web works. I said that you got... The web works because your computer asks a server for a web page. How does that work? Well, all of the web uses HTTP. And that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Which is just a fancy way of saying the thing that makes it get websites out of um, so let's go to my awesome website again, and I'm going to go to the network tag tab in the DevTools this time. This is also a great tool because if I hit refresh here, these are all the requests that my computer made to other servers to load this website. So we're going to ignore this one because that might be like an exception or something, but this first thing if I click on it, and then I click headers, this is the request that my computer made to get this website, uh, which means that it, uh, so this is an HTTP request. Uh, and so let's go over a bit about what an HTTP request is. Okay. So, an HTTP request is just simple text. Um, what a basic website, like if you went to google.com, 
what it would do is find Google server and it would send this text. So get, which is the method, slash, which if you just type in a blank website, that's the root of the website, and then the version, HTTP slash 1.1. There's also, there can be headers after this. There can be other headers. And then, yeah, that's it. So this is, it's very simple how they work because it's literally just text. You can read through them. Uh, you can read through HTTP requests and modify them. So, uh, and then the website just responds with another HTTP. Uh, it would be like this. Got some headers. And then it sends the code. So, and we can see this in the browser itself. So when I hit refresh, my computer made a get request to this URL, and it got, we can't exactly see, I don't think we can see the actual request itself, but we can see that it was a get request, we can see the response. We can see where it was sent to. We can see all the headers that I sent, my browser sent. And we can see all the headers that, oh, here we go. All right, so this is the request exactly as my browser sent it. And this is the request exactly as it came back. So it's just a method, what you want. And if I got like slash pi, of course, it doesn't exist, but my computer would have gotten get slash pi. So get the path that you want, and then the version, and then a bunch of headers. And then the server responds with version, a status code, the message that that status code represents, a bunch of headers, and then the website itself. So that's the thing. Uh, all right. So that's how HTTP requests work. Um, get request is the most basic. Basically, it's just give me this website. Um, there's nothing, no, there's no real like data sent. It's just a request to get the website. There's also, okay, and then that's generally used for like static websites, like if you have a GitHub pages or uh, other static websites where it's just files. Uh, then get requests are basically all you're going to be making. There's also post requests, which are, I don't have an example here, but um, post requests are like if you log into a website, if you log into Twitter, you log into Discord, something like that, um, your browser will send a post request, which is basically just a get request with data attached to it. So it would send a post request uh, to log in with your username and password attached, and then uh, the server would be able to do with that what it wants. Uh, that's another thing about web, is that your it sends you files, right? Uh, and then your web browser renders them itself. Uh, if that was all there was to it, the website, the web would be very boring, uh, because you wouldn't be able to log into anything, you wouldn't be able to, uh, search lots of data. There's a lot of things that you wouldn't be able to do. Um, but servers can do whatever they want and then send, they can do whatever what they want with the data that you send them. And then they can send you a personalized website just for you. So if I log in to a website and I go to my dashboard, I can go to the same, I don't know, discordapp.com and I can get a different response than anybody else because I'm logged in and it shows my name in the top corner. So I would go to the website, it would recognize that my browser was the one sending the request, it would on the fly insert the code, the HTML to display my profile picture and then it would send it to me. 
The thing is, oh, yep, go for it. It does that for cookies. It does that for cookies, yeah. That's a little bit ahead of the game. Um, but it does do that for cookies, and we're going to talk about it later. Um, so, the thing is, sometimes you can send the server data to get it to do things that it's not supposed to do. Uh, maybe you can send it too much data, or you can get things that you're not supposed to be able to get. Um, or use different requests that it wasn't made to handle. Uh, so, yeah, let me, I think that leads right into Postman. So, if you have Postman downloaded, you might want to open it. So, this is Postman, and I also have a site called Request Bin. So, let me copy this. Basically, any requests I send here will show up here. So if I just go to it in my browser, all right, and there it is. So my browser sent a get request, and it also got the favicon so that it could display an icon. Um, you can also send post requests, delete requests, put requests. So let's try some of that. Let's send something different. Here's my URL. Let's make something up after it. So this is the path. If I send this right away, we'll have a GET request that gets API slash home. And yep, there it is. GET slash API slash home. Here's all the headers that it sent. We can also do a POST request. And then if I go into the body here and pick one of these, let's go with form data. All right, let's go with X, 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 W, W, yeah, this one. Uh, so let's pretend like I'm logging into somewhere. Username, me, password, also me. And then I send that off. So this is what that, let's see here. Visualize this. No, let's look at it. So that's what this looks like. So it's just post. It's the same thing, except for post is the first four letters. Uh, it's the path that I put in. It's the data that I sent. And then it's the headers. So you can do whatever you want with Postman. Uh, and it will act basically the same as your web browser, except for, you know, long mode, because you're doing everything manually. Um, but that also means that you can send servers things that they should not be receiving. So, like, if you send a post request, something that's only configured to get, have a get request, maybe something will be different. Uh, you can send a post request with custom data attached. Uh, the other thing that I should talk about is cookies. So, the way that a website stores who you are is when you go to it and you log in, or you just visit it for the first time, you get a cookie. Uh, and it depends on what cookies the website wants to set, maybe it doesn't set any at all. Uh, but if we go into the dev tools again, we go to application, and then cookies. I will have none, because this is website doesn't set any. Let's go to request bin. Inspect, drop down application, request bins cookies. That's a lot of cookies. There's a lot of cookies. Um, so these are mainly used for keeping sessions. Maybe they are used to provide analytics, like track you across requests, uh, steal your data. Uh, I don't know. So that is, and basically, if I delete all of these, and then I go to it again, it'll be like someone entirely new has gone to this website. So let's clear all these cookies, refresh the page. So it doesn't reflect here because I'm not logged in or anything. Uh, but it's as if I'm a new browser entirely because I have no cookies. So let's go on to another demo, shall we? Same website, just increase the number at the end by one. And this time you'll be putting Postman to good use. 
Uh, if anybody has any questions on how Force Man works, it should be re relatively self-explanatory, but I can cover some things up here as well. And you guys will have probably like 20 minutes to do this. So, good luck.
So, all right, hold on. I gotta find it. There we go. So, easy. The first one, get. It's just what your browser does right away. Here's our first part of the flag. Uh, top of the notepad here. So, really, just this one is just going down the list. Let's copy this. Our first one's get, easy. Second one, let's do post. We'll get rid of these. There we go, part three of six. That's three. We're just gonna go down the list. Oh, hold on, where is it? Options is next, we're gonna do options. Yeah, what's up? Uh, I believe this will let you do that. So let's go back to that post one real quick. This has HTML, right? If I click visualize, it's not going to do anything. Preview. 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 There we go. All right, so since it's built in with your web browser, you can just click preview and that'll let you see it. If not, you can just paste it into an HTML file. Like just create a file called something.html and then double click it. And then you can see what it is. Um, so that's post options. There we go, part six. Part six. What's next? We got head. And this one is in the headers. Flag part two. And this is right here. Point, that's next. Oops. There it is. Oops, right here. And then the last one is delete. So there's a lot of different messages. Sometimes they do different things, sometimes they just mean the same thing. It's up to you to try it out. Five to six. All right, so if we put this together, we get part two is getting robots.txt. What does that mean? So if we go to this website and type in robots.txt, robots.txt is a very common file on most websites that defines boundaries for web scrapers, like the things that Google, Bing uses to um, like index websites and let you search them. Uh, and sometimes they can have hidden web pages that you shouldn't be going to, but which is kind of stupid because you can just see it. Um, so, and then, I mean, challenges always like to hide stuff in robots.txt. First thing after, I said it before, the first thing after checking out a website, open up DevTools. Second thing to do after that is just go to robots.txt, see if there's anything there. There's, generally going to be something good there. Um, so yeah, there's your flag. So that is HTTP requests. Um, if we go back to the PowerPoint, uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. There's going to be more on Friday. Uh, and we'll be talking about things like SQL injection, um, XSS, stuff like that. Real quick, do not touch major websites with this stuff. You can use an inspect element, but don't do anything bad to other websites. If you have Google, if you have Facebook, if you have Brightspace, we do not know you. We've never seen your face before. Uh, beyond that, if you have questions, come up to the front.